Hey everyone, I wanted to do a video today about our politically correct culture, which in my mind seems to be driven uh, mainly between a conflict between truth and tone. Truth is reality. It is the way things actually are. Tone, on the other hand, has to do with communication. Now, contrary to what many on the right tend to say, I think tone actually matters quite a bit. Tone is essentially a form of salesmanship. It is the ability for one not to offend someone in the process of trying to communicate the truth. The obvious problem is that some truth, what we often call hard truths, are not pleasant and often are offensive. So what are we to do? Are we to just avoid discussing these truths? Are we to oppose speech because it might trigger people? Are people unsafe because they were told a hard truth that was offensive? If you watch carefully, the left is obsessed with tone. If someone says something that is offensive but true, the reaction is not to say, hey, that's not true, let me explain what the truth is. Instead, the left attacks the motives of the person who speaks the truth, calling them names like bigot, homophobe, sexist, etc., etc. To be more specific, if you point out the differences between men and women, you're called a sexist. If you point out the truth that black communities have a higher rate of violent crime, you are called a racist. If you point out the fact that half of British Muslims want to make homosexual behavior illegal, you are called an Islamophobe. The formula is pretty simple. If you speak an uncomfortable truth, many don't try and refute the truth, they instead insist that they're offended and then question you personally as to your motivations, or more commonly, they make assumptions about your motivations and just call you names. We all know that there are certain truths that we dare not utter, especially for us on the right, because we know that there's an outrage mob who will get offended by the truth and attack us personally. This is why many people remain silent in social, religious, and political discussions. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people who are irrational in their critiques of Islam or women or men or blacks or any other community. That's not what I'm talking about here. I am talking about how compassion and feelings are weaponized as a way to attack those who speak difficult truths when the other side cannot refute the truth. I am merely saying that when the conversation switches away from a dialogue about, hey, what is the truth, to, hey, your truth is hurting people's feelings, so shut up, this is a form of truth suppression. Tone is merely meant to be a tool we use in order to disseminate the truth more effectively. They really should be saying something like, we need to find a better way to convey this truth. But that's not what is said. Either you are angrily told to shut up because you're offending people, or you are politely told to shut up because you are offending people. I am all for finding effective ways to convey the truth, but I am not big on telling people to shut up. To be fair, there may be limited instances, especially in personal relationships, where you may want to avoid some of these hard truths, like when your wife asks if the dress she you know, has on makes her look fat. But as a matter of public dialogue on important social, religious, and political matters, we need to be able to have honest adult conversations about difficult truths without being shamed if we tell the truth. You see, the truth should always be the primary focus, because if we don't face reality accurately and frame it accurately, then we're never going to be able to solve the problems that we face. Dennis Prager recently emphasized in one of his videos something along these lines when he said that the left cares more about what feels good than what actually does good. Do the Democrat welfare programs in cities like Chicago that they've tried to implement over the past 50 years actually do good? They certainly feel good. It feels good to tell people that we're going to help them and give them these handout programs to give them a leg up, but as the economist Thomas Sowell has pointed out extensively and conclusively in his books, these welfare programs rarely, if ever, actually do good. Yet, we still hear these same ideas being parroted because it feels good to tell people that you're going to help them through various welfare programs. And making people feel good is a great way to get them to vote for you. One of the reasons we've seen an upsurge in the free speech movement is because the left has increasingly prioritized feelings over facts. The danger is that we no longer are able to talk about difficult truths that we all have to face. 
And sometimes the difficult truths are the most important because they often are the ones that are the most ignored. If you operate in a world where feelings are valued over the truth, then you operate in a world where you don't have a full view of the truth. In other words, you live in a world of delusion, and delusional worlds are often dangerous worlds. This is why the free speech battle matters so much. Ultimately, free speech is about seeking the truth and facing up to even the difficult truths of life so that we can know how to properly operate in this world in a way that maximizes our own well-being and the well-being of others.